All right, welcome to Code HS Functions with Carol. Let's look at these questions. We are in Unit 2. Which function will teach Carol how to spin in a circle? We're looking for the right syntax. All right, it looks like B. All right, not much of a quiz there. Okay. All righty. So what we're seeing here in this example is just that Carol can turn around. Um, two turn lefts. We're defining it. Just in the example, I'll move on. All right, this next one, uh, I am going to leave my code here. I've already done this. This is kind of a re-recording. So most of you might just want to pause the screen and check out the code. But you can see uh, Make Pancakes. I included it to add the move from the stack of pancakes so that you just need to move and then make pancakes, move, make pancakes. And it kind of saves some steps. Um, and it still checks out when you do it that way. As you can see, we're adding that extra move in the make pancake function just condenses our code even more. And we get all green check marks. We can move on. Right, this next one, we're going to look at it. Uh, wants Carol to do a backflip. So we want Carol to move two times, do a backflip, move two more times, and do another backflip. And the results, you can see Carol doing the flipping. They're going to move twice, backflip, move twice, backflip. We have a starting and ending world. Again, my function is already there if you want to pause it, but I went ahead and included the moves with the backflip function. So really, I'm just calling backflip, backflip. And because it has those moves built in, this, again, condensed my code, made it more concise. And we get the green check marks doing it that way. All right, this one is cool. This is new this year for 24-25, so I was actually excited to see something different. Um, I'm a big fan of the changes I've seen so far in Code HS. So we've got a, a little Mario simulation. Uh, only thing is in Mario, the coins were in the bricks, but I guess we can't bust bricks with Carol just yet, maybe in a few years. Um, and this is just showing you that it wants you to not cheat. Uh, technically, you could just go up and stay up and kind of move through. Um, so, what I have here, I would have my function collect coins if you want to take a look at that. But it's just the process of walking through. What do I need to do? I need to move. I need to turn left, move up to the coins, take the balls, turn around, move down, and then face back to the left. Um, and I had to define the turnaround function because right now Carol cannot turn around. So, I also have that function definition. And then it's simply a process of collect the coins. After you come down and land, you need to move forward once, collect coins, move forward, collect coins, move, and so on. And again, with functions, um, I included these extra moves. If you didn't do that and you're just here to check um, to each their own, I just try to include as much as I can in a function while I'm at it to save myself some lines of code. Alrighty, but that one does check out. Again, just make sure you see the function calls down at the bottom. We've got our green check marks. We're ready to move on. All right, we are on into lesson 2.2. We're going to dig. We're going to build a tent, build a shelter. All right, so here's another one. Um, this one wants us to bury balls, and I think we had to create a function called bury ball. So again, I looked at where I was starting with Carol and tried to find a way to maximize the amount of code I could put in this particular function. So if you look, um, the setup for Carol each time before going to bury the ball is that Carol has to move and then Carol's on the edge. So that's why you can see I have the move right there and then we have a secondary move. Um, so I kind of have this initial move. And the reason I did that is, you will see in a little bit, um, that has to get me, the first move here gets me over the hole. So I had this first move, and the reason I couldn't incorporate both moves um, is... Actually, I guess I probably could have done that. No, that final berry ball. Um, I guess I could have, couldn't I? Well, 
Nobody is perfect, but we have move, variable, move, variable. So I technically could have moved, moved. Um, but you see the process. And then we'll kind of get into just letting you look through and watch it run. And we're almost. done. All right, we got the blue box, green check marks. We're good to go. All right, this next one. I want to build a shelter. And I'm resetting my code. I've done this one before. So um, this one we wanted to <coughs> debug it. So down here, turn right. And we don't need to declare, we don't need to define the function again. It's already been defined. We just need to call the function. So again, defining the function is when you type function in the name and list what it's going to do. Calling the function is just calling it with the parentheses and the semicolon to make it happen. All right, and we finally... Get that one finished up. Building a tent. This one again had a make left side, make right side. Um, have a go home function. That was, I think, the bug. So we take that out. That kind of spoiled the answer. But essentially what you'll find if you're starting from scratch on this one, uh, Carol doesn't do the last step of returning to the starting point. The function was already created. It was called go home. And we will see it in just a second as we finish. So it tells us Carol should be on column one, but it's on seven. Again, we look at all of the functions that were created for us. Some good commenting telling us what it should do. All the way down to the bottom. There it is. So go back to the starting position. Go home. That function was created. We just didn't call it. So we just need to call the go home function after make right side. And we should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and jump into two, three. All right, how many times should the main function be defined? Once, it should be defined once, and it should be called once. All right, that is why it is the main function. Okay. All right, again, this is one that is an example. You can see a function called main that we're gonna use going forward. Uh, previous years in code HS, this was called the start function. I'm a big fan of changing it to main as it is in the real world. Um, so we're now going to look at the pancakes that we did previously. Again, I kind of already plugged this in. So you want to create a function called main. Plug in your code, move, make pancakes, move, make pancakes. You still have your definition for make pancakes. But then now we just call the main function and we're done. Going back to the digging one we did a little while ago. Again, just want to move our main algorithm, the main program statements, into the main function. Call the main function one time and it should run with us. So we're, again, still using the berry ball function. So you can go back and copy and paste from your previous program. Or if you need to look at the screen, I'll highlight the different levels where you could maybe pause and check your code. But really main and berry ball are the two you probably came to see. Turn right and turn around, hopefully you have by now, but you do need to include them. But this is outside of the function definitions. This is technically just a one procedure function, main, and it does it all for us.
Alrighty, and that's all for 2.3. We're now in 2.4, going over the concept of top-down design. Uh, why do we use functions in programming? Uh, we use it for all of those things. It makes our code um, more readable, avoids repeating code. We can break it down into smaller parts. What is top-down design? That first answer is the correct one. It allows us to take a big problem, make it more manageable by breaking it down into smaller problems. Um, I will skip the video. All right, so we have an example here of our hurdle problem. And it's just showing you that rather than saying, hey, you have to jump these hurdles and trying to do it all at once, is breaking it down to three steps. Run to hurdle, jump hurdle, and then run to finish. All righty. So Carol's now building two towers. So this one wanted us to write at least three functions to solve this problem. Again, my code is already here. Um, so if you want to pause and look at it, so I have the always needed right now with Carol, turn right, turn around. Then I made one called build tower. So that will actually build the tower and put Carol on top of the tower facing right, which is needed for the last one. But then I also have a climb down that gets Carol down from the first tower and moves over to the position to build the second. So I have build tower, climb down, build tower. Those are the three program statements in my main function. And then I call the main function. And when we run it, we are good to go. All right, we've got a buggy problem. All right, let's find it and fix it. Zorro here, so I'm going to reset my code so I can get back to the original version with the bug. All right, Carol doesn't know how to turn right. So it looks like we told Carol to turn right. We did not define the turn right function, so that is something we are going to need to do. And we will have three turn lefts to make that turn right. Oh, Carol doesn't know how to turn around either. Okay, we need to add that one in. So hopefully everybody knows turn right and turn around by now. Lots of turning left, just in different increments, different members of turn lefts. Okay, now we're good to go. All right. All right, lastly, we have a reflection. Describe top-down design in your own words. Um, I'll type it out. If you'd like to read my thoughts, feel free to pause the screen and read it. Um, otherwise, I will see you for the lessons in Unit 3.